Good evening and welcome back to my channel. Um, once again, you caught me right after cosplaying. And since I'm in my Raider costume, ready for the um, wasteland, let's go. Let's get into the wasteland. And hopefully this thing doesn't crash on me again. <laughs> I swear I just recorded over an hour of content that it didn't record at all. So hopefully this time it works where I wasn't in costume. So tonight we are going to be into the mystery disappearance, mysterious disappearance of Louis Le Prince, uh, or Louis. He was born in 1841 in France, um, and he studied art and physics and chemistry, and he was a man of the world, and he was curious, and he loved it. Um, hopefully you guys can hear the characters speaking. Um, just take a prince on Mr. Louis. I've been having trouble getting people to understand, and I'm trying to just do like little miscellaneous stuff before we continue with the main storyline. Uh, so real quick, let's pick this up. Examine. Earl Sterling, disappearance, client, Vadim Bob... <laughs> Bobrov. Another disappearing act to unravel. Earl Sterling, 25 year old bartender at the Dugout Inn, one of the owners, Vadim, noticed that Earl hadn't been into work for a few days. Next. Security was called in. No investigation, of course. The Institute took him, is the unofficial word about town, like always. Vadim came into my office half drunk with a sob story about he how he and Earl went way back and that he just can't believe that Earl would get snatched by the boogeyman. My gut says he's right. Earl didn't have any enemies, at least none with motives enough to kill the guy, not living with anyone either, so I'll have to see if Vadim or someone else at the dugout has his keys. I'd rather not have to explain to security why I'm picking the lock on Earl's door if I slip up and get caught in the act. Okay. Taking... And where's Ellie? Is she home? Is she here? There's Ellie. We can also talk to her. I'm glad you're here. We got a new case while you and Nick were out. Ready to put on the detective hat? Let's hear it. Man, our client is a fisherman back on the edge of the common. Kenji Nakano. Mr. Nakano didn't need the details. But he'd go over everything when you need him. But if you want to know this missing person case. I'm on it. near the coast, a small fishing house. He said that he and his wife will be waiting for you. Okay. Uh, a small fishing house. If you guys couldn't hear that, because I have a feeling that got cut. Out. Um, and it's such a short thing. I'm probably not going to edit it out just to make this stuff so. I feel like it'd make it too choppy. Anyways, back to Louis. So Louis gets married in 1869, has some chitlins, some little kitties, and then moves to New York in 1881. And in 1885, he is working as a manager excuse me, for some um, art dealers. Let me make sure these are the only ones... I don't want to work on reunions right now. Um, do these ones not have? No, I don't want to talk to Sturgis. Unclick that. Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh, this is the DLC. Okay, I don't want to do that one yet. We do not want to do the DLC yet. Um. That is for, um, oh my god, <clears throat> Far Harbor, Far Harbor, uh, which is amazing, but I don't want to go there just yet, uh, so we'll do the Disappearing Act first. Okay. So, um, no wonder I didn't recognize that radio thing, I'd only done it like one time. Why do I still have two things? I want to go to security. Um, okay, 
So, while he's in New York, he is working with painters and they're painting scenery. And while he's out there, he said he was just so inspired that he wanted people to be able to see this, but in moving, like in, in the motion, you know? So he creates this 16 lens camera to capture these pictures better um, and make them moving pictures. Oh, all my DLCs are popping up now. Okay. This is what I like about you, Ryan. Am I supposed to be talking to him? Or is the dugout under? Yeah, it's under here. That's why. We'll just jump down. Jumping down. Bloop. There we go. Okay, this must be his house. But we want to go to the depth now. I feel like a lot of things are just popping up, man. Okay. Uh, so he creates a 16 lens camera and... Oh, that's Earl's house. Where's the dugout? I just saw the sign for it. Am I just walking right past? I am. I'm just walking right past it. That is... And he gets a patent for this, and he, in the wording for the patent, he kind of, open the door, he hints to also eventually making it a one lens camera. Um, rumors are that he either had already started working on it, or that's just the automatically, duh, that's where we're going. So, and he, he gets the patent, and then he moves back to England, because he was worried about industrial spies, you know, trying to steal his idea. So in 1888, he created the single lens camera and he was using thin paper to take the pictures and he was even able to make some movies, very short movies. You can watch them um, of his family just walking around the yard. And some of the proof you have that this movie was created by him at this time is that a woman in this video actually dies 10 days after making the video. So that's kind of the proof they used but future-wise, spoiler alert, in court, uh, when they end up in court with Edison's team. So he ends up creating this huge 40-pound thing, and he ends up using a celluloid, replacing the thin paper with celluloid, and that celluloid, he's even able to replace the glass of the lens, so this thing is way more sturdier, and he's not breaking as many things. So he ends up going to Paris with this and shows it off at this opera and even some, like, you know, uh, big wigs are looking at it, checking it out, and saw the, the little movies he had created. And he got patents in Paris and England, but when he tried to get patents in America, they were like, mm, not enough, we gotta see it. So he's like, great, getting on a train. So he gets on a train, his plan was to get on a train from uh, France to England, get his shit, head on over to America. Unfortunately, from France to England, the man disappears gone with this with a briefcase of all of his things well all of the patent papers he'd been working on and him just gone off the map done never see him again never see those papers again his family does did still have the camera but unfortunately due to patent laws they couldn't use it or show it for seven years um allowing edison to slip on in and show his and he became the known inventor for it so here are the theories. One of the major theories is that Edison had him killed because Edison was making this and wanted it out first, so he kills him. I personally, eh, not crazy about this theory because Edison was a shrewd businessman. He was kind of an inventor, um, but way more of a businessman, and he's not dumb. And he ends up taking these people to court and giving them their day in court to prove that uh, Prince created this. I don't think Edison would be that dumb. If he really knew Prince was already creating this and Prince was now off the map, he would have never taken these people to court to give them a platform to go, wait, here's all the proof that he did do this. You know, you, you'd you bury that. You'd bury that family, you know? So I don't think Edison had anything to do with it. And then the next one is that his brother had him killed uh, because of family stuff. 
which could, his brother's the only witness that saw him get on the train. Nobody else could corroborate that he was on the train, which they found odd because he was a 6'3 man in the 1800s, which was super, super duper tall. I mean, that's tall even these days, but it was dumb, dumb tall. Man was a giraffe back then. So it definitely gives you, but I feel like you'd notice, but also would you, you know? You're reading your paper, you're taking care of your kids. I mean, yeah, dude's tall. You're also talking about another old white dude with a black suit and a sea full of white dudes with black suits. Like, I don't know if anybody would actually remember. Let's talk to Vlad real quick. Mm. Cough on me. Okay. I have a feeling you guys can't hear this, so I'm just going to go ahead and say, he's talking about he was friends with Earl, great old friend, asking if I'm with Nick. I'm like, yeah, I'm with Nick. So he gives me Earl's house keys, and we're out. Uh, not interested. Maybe later. Okay, bye. All right. Do, do, do. So, unfortunately, that ends Prince's story. Like I said, his family did end up in court with their day in court to try to prove. But um, they ended up bringing other families even into this whole court case. And he just got, their stuff just got buried. Nothing ever really got proven. And um, it just, he just lost the history now. And Edison got the claim to fame, which is really sad. Um, his family, his current lineage states that they think he just was mugged he was just mugged robbed killed and lost in a ditch somewhere so that's really sad um but this did bring up a lot of edison stuff for me because it was like you do learn in school what a great inventor edison is the telegraph the, the motion picture the the light bulbs you know and then you get older, and then it's, no, Edison stole all of his ideas. Edison was a bastard who killed elephants. And it's kind of like, <laughs> which is it? So when I went in looking, it was, it was that Edison, from a very early age, was bright, loved learning. He had to, he was very self-taught. Um, his mother homeschooled him. Uh, he loved to read. But he was, from an early age, a businessman. He loved business. So he, um, that's what he did. He started selling papers and he started, um, that's how he got into the whole phonograph thing was that it was, um, it's what the, uh, the train station used that he would sell papers to and he, uh, would fiddle around with it and it made him feel like, um, something he was super curious about. What the fuck I'm doing here? I guess looking for clues. Um, what is that? A little, a little dust. An orb. <gasps> His house is haunted. Oh, okay. Is it? Uh huh. Surgery receipt. Uh, Dr. Crocker, resident surgeon, reconstruction face, procedure to be performed upon clearance of something payment. Peter. Oh, patient. Sterling Earl. Okay. Take. Okay. So now we go investigate the surgeon. Um... So yeah, in my findings of Edison, he was a businessman always first, and then kind of a tinkerer. And that's why most of his inventions, when you look back on, there were other people who created the phonograph before Edison. Edison perfected the phonograph. The same thing with the light bulb. Um, other people created the light bulb. Edison perfected the light bulb, especially for us over here. Um, 
So it is definitely a um Edison always had this dream of more like think like Johnson and Johnson, how that name is like on things of multiple products. That's what Edison wanted. He wanted a business uh that was just like Edison, 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 name everywhere, a name you could trust, you put value in. So yes, he did have people who worked under him and they did create things and he did take those patents from them. Um kind of shady, but I think that actually still happens today. When you work for certain companies, your ideas become their ideas. Uh, a lot of people still sign those kinds of contracts. So mm, I think Edison was just a CEO, uh, a shrewd, shrewd CEO. His battle with Tesla over the electric currents and stuff, I think he, he was not going to give up his idea, which, hey, you know, um, you got to like a man who... Is that dedicated, I guess? But, oh, here's a doctor right here. Ugh, I don't want to talk anymore because I know you guys can't hear it. Um, I'm almost done anyway, so we'll just stare at this Diamond City guard. <laughs> Though I do, uh, okay, I'll just, I'll explain it to you because this one does in pretty good. Okay. He's asking me if I have a legitimate, a legitimate medical CERN or am I blah, blah, blah. So you the receipt, do you know Earl? Hmm. Dr. Crocker did this. Hmm. Earl was one of his patients. Just mundane work, low risk. And then Earl was gone. Now, what do I need? I don't need shit. Tell me more about Dr. Crocker. Last time I saw him, he had to get something out of the surgery shop. Uh, he's getting something out of surgery. Okay, so now I want to, uh... Can I go to the cellar? I'm investigating a missing person, man. Come on. Investigating a missing person, doctor. And I think the trail leads to your basement. Missing person. <gasps> a missing person. I can't honestly think. We would never. It'll put the matter to rest. Fine. Go to the Take it. Go to the cellar. But if anything's missing, I'm coming for you. Thank you, Doctor Sun. Going to the cellar. Now. Look at, look at this. Really? I mean, I know you guys are surgeons, but this is, uh, this isn't great. Hmm. Not, not a good look, Doc. Not a good look. Uh, so yeah, my opinion ended on Edison being, oh. Oh my God. <gasps> Oh, shit. Earl Sterling? What have you done? I, I, I didn't do anything. It was, uh, Earl wanted this. He just, he just wanted a face. And then he bled all over the floor. <sighs> mm, and peacefully. You got this, Doc. You made a boo-boo, but you can do the right thing. There's one thing I can't do. Only one thing is going to make this all better. Only one thing is going to make this better. Oh, he killed himself. No, Dr. Cracker, why? Oh, you bastard. Ah, I should have killed him. Oh, well. I think you owe me an explanation. Um, let's be honest. Your your doc killed the patient, and we found him chopped up. Doctor Crocker killed Earl. Doctor Crocker killed Earl. No. 
Well, that kind of explains a lot. A lot of people go missing around that doctor. Our reputation will never be the same. It's not your fault. Of course it's not my fault. It was that moron. <sighs> now two lives have been lost. This is just disgraceful. Get out. Now I have to clean everything up. Okay, well, I'm going to go loot the body, so don't, uh, don't shoot me or anything. Well, I already got his house key. Thank you. I'm going to keep the cellar key. Okay, eh, I don't need the rest. Uh, all this stuff would be stealing. All right. One last look, everyone, of all the blood and guts and how he dropped him up. Tisk tisk. Tisk tisk. I love all the murders you can find in these games. I tell you what, this is completely off subject. Uh, Red Dead has an amazing, like, little mystery side quest for murder. Amazing. Anyways, so let me go tell Ellie that Earl's dead and Dr. Crocker was killing folks. Maybe the Institute isn't kidnapping as many people as they think the Institute's kidnapping. I mean, I know they kind of admit that they're kidnappers, but maybe not. Like, Anyway, so I want to finish this out with going over just a couple of other... Um, Oh, Ellie. Uh, Crocker killed him. He didn't go anywhere. Because Crocker killed him. Crocker killed him? I really thought it was going to be the Institute, but... Wow. Well, he killed himself. You couldn't take it. Wow, I'm sorry you went through that. I'll send word along. Down to the dugout. This is a shame. Thank you for doing this for us. You're welcome, Ellie. You're welcome. Okay, so our last little list. So, we, the telephone. We all know Alexander Graham Bell, but actually the telephone was created 16 years earlier, patented it all. And when Graham Bell made his and when I made the telephone, he actually got sued and it took 20 years, 20 years. And the other guy, I'm going to butcher his name. He was Italian, Mikushi, who made the first telephone uh, almost won, but then he died. So Alexander Graham Bell won because he died. Uh, then you have... So we know Marconi made the radio, but actually all the uh, science he used to make that radio was actually Nikola Tesla science. And Tesla sued and was like, that's all my fucking science. And uh, Tesla won, kind of, was winning. And then, but, Mar but um, Marconi went out in the public, got more money, more backing. So then he won, but then Years down the road, the Supreme Court came back and said, no, no, it was Tesla science. Uh, the laser, this kid created this in college, went to his professor for advice. The professor took this information and went and got a fucking patent for it and started calling it his. The kid had taken to court, took fucking decades. Uh, he ended up getting millions, but still, you have Tommy Tippy. The lady went around trying to sell her sippy cup ideas. Tommy Tippy stole that shit. She had to sue. Uh, she did win. Monopoly. A woman created Monopoly. She had to sue, too. Uh, she didn't really win anything, honestly, other than the right to keep her game. Because her game technically had a different name called, like, Renters or something like that. Um, she, I think she got the shittiest end of the stick on all of these. Out of all of these. Um, oh, windshield wipers. The intermediate windshield wipers. This guy went around to every car company hoping one of them would buy and invest in his idea. And they all went... Oh, that's kind of silly. Put it on all the cars. So he got to sue. He did get some money out of it. But by then, it was kind of like all the cars already had them. So he couldn't, like, get it back or anything. Um, 
And then Margaret Knight, she made the brown paper bag machine. And I know what you're like, like, what the fuck is that? Well, brown paper bags didn't always have flat bottoms. And this woman said they would work so much better with flat bottoms. So she made a machine to make them have flat bottoms. And then a man came and said, patent that for me. And she went, hey, no. And she had to sue him. And then, of course, Edison. All of his inventions were created before he invented them. But he did perfect them. So kind of. Yeah. So that's it. What I learned from tonight. Um, if you have an idea, a truly unique idea, shut your fucking mouth. Go get a fucking patent. And make sure that patent is uber specific. Super duper duper specific. Just fucking wing that shit, man. Make it. LLC it. Patent it. And then come out with it. Don't tell nobody. Not even your mothers. Nobody. <laughs> but that is it for tonight. I will be back on Friday. I have some missing families. What happened to them? Um, my, I have one family so far. I'm still doing some research on is the Jameson family. And I'm going to find another family. Uh, just to match the theme. And then I found this adorable dog story. Uh, so I think I'm going to add doggies being heroes to the end of the shows uh, as little short stories. So thank you. Please like, subscribe, follow, comment, interact. <laughs> and I'll see you guys uh, on Friday. Bye.